Previously, we talked about Lady Han winning the competition with Zhang Jiam's help and became the head kitchen lady. This made Lady Choi unhappy and she tried to drag Lady Han down from that position. And Zhang Jiam is also about to encounter a big crisis. Hi everyone, this is Popcorn Set here. Today I will talk about part 4 of Jewel in the palace. Lady Jung's health deteriorates. She asks the queen mother to hold a ceremony for Lady Han to take over as head kitchen lady in three days. Then she will leave the palace. Lady Jung is afraid that Lady Choi will give Lady Han a hard time in the future, so she begs her not to make more trouble for Lady Han. But clearly Lady Choi won't listen to her. On the day of the ceremony, none of the kitchen ladies shows up. It turns out that Lady Choi has secretly bribed the kitchen ladies to boycott Lady Han as head kitchen lady for the reason that Lady Han did not participate in the competition herself, and she has a lowly class background. Lady Jun, who is about to leave the palace, faints in anger. Lady Jun knows that Lady Han must be frightened now. She tells Lady Han to be strong. If she is strong, the strong storm will become like a light breeze. In the past, I was your barrier to block the storm. Now you have to be the storm yourself. Lady Jung gives the record book belonging to the head kitchen lady to Lady Han and leaves the palace. Yunqing and Zhang Jiam are sent to serve her. Lady Jung, who's seriously ill, tells Zhang Jiam that Lady Han has lost her best friend in the palace and became withdrawn. She hid her pain and was afraid of being sad again so she isolated herself. The first person who opened Lady Han's heart was you. You have to promise me that you will stop her from giving up in any situation. Zhang Jiam agrees. Soon, Lady Jung passes away. Zhang Jiam fulfills Lady Jung's last wish to scatter her ashes in the clouds. Lady Jung lived her whole life in the palace and asked Zhang Jiam to scatter her ashes in the clouds so that when it rains, she could follow the raindrops to visit all over the world. In the palace, Lady Choi and other kitchen ladies continue to ostracize Lady Han. Lady Han is so exhausted that she thinks of stepping down as head kitchen lady. Zhang Jiam seriously advises her to persevere. Lady Han decides to overcome her weakness and face Lady Choi with courage. Knowing she was absent from the last contest, she asks the Queen Mother to let her compete again with Lady Choi. The Queen Mother agrees and lets the Queen take charge of the competition. The task of the competition is to cook a pot of rice, which is pretty straightforward. The rice cooked by the two contestants will be served in a yellow bowl and a white bowl and evaluated by the court ladies in the kitchen. The court ladies don't get to know who made the two types of rice. They will judge them based on taste preference. In the end, the yellow bowl receives 9 votes, and the white bowl receives 5 votes. The yellow bowl of rice is made by Lady Han. It turns out that since all the kitchen ladies grew up in the palace together, Lady Han knows how all the ladies like their rice cooked. Some prefer to add more water at the beginning so that the rice is softer. Thus, she presents the rice according to their taste. So everyone is satisfied and Lady Han wins. The queen appreciates Lady Han's carefulness. She tells everyone that from now on, all the kitchen ladies must obey Lady Han. After that, the imperial kitchen begins to reform under Lady Han's leadership. Zhang Jiam leaves a letter at the place where her mother buried the aged vinegar, hoping to meet her mother's best friend. Min Zhang Ho investigates that many internal losses are happening in the palace that he talks to Lady Han in private. He says he wants Lady Han to assist him in inventorying the supplies in the royal kitchen. He believes a tradition of corruption is happening in the royal kitchen. Therefore, Lady Han appoints Zhang Jiam to help Min Zhang Ho by keeping an inventory of the products that come into the kitchens. It soon appears that there are dodgy things going on in the kitchen accounts. The palace rule states that the remaining materials must be returned after being used, but a lot of kitchen supervisors have taken the materials for their own use, sold them out of the palace and even used them as gifts to bribe the head court lady. The kitchen supervisors who stole from the palace are nervous about the situation. Lady Choi, who has stolen a lot of goods from the kitchen, realizes something must be done, otherwise she could be in trouble. Therefore, she instructs one of the court ladies named Young Ro to steal the account books from Zhang Jiam's room. Zhang Jiam's mother's recipe book is hidden in one of the account books. Lady Choi looks at the books Young Ro took from Zhang Jiam and doesn't see anything special about them. She sees Zhang Jiam's mother's recipe book, but she thinks it belongs to Lady Han. So she tells Young Ro to return the books. 
However, Young Ro keeps Jiang Jiem's mother's booklet out of curiosity. Yunxin catches Young Ro reading it. Lady Han walks in, takes the recipe book, and realizes it's her friend Lady Park's secret recipe. She asks Young Ro where she got it. Young Ro lies, saying she found it accidentally on the ground fallen from the tree. Young Ro tells Lady Choi the recipe book doesn't belong to Lady Han like Lady Choi had said, since Lady Han asked her what it is and where she got it. Jiem Young and Lady Choi wonder why Jiang Jiem has an aged recipe book. Lady Choi soon works out that Jiang Jiem must be Lady Park's daughter. Lady Choi then tells Jiem Young the story of Lady Park. She was Lady Han's best friend in the palace. Around 20 years ago, Lady Park saw her adding poison to the meal. She and her aunt who was the head kitchen lady back then framed Lady Park by saying she had an affair with a palace guard. They then poisoned her but Lady Park was not dead and gave birth to Jiang Jiem. That's why Jiang Jiem knew so much about food. On the other hand, Jiang Jiem finds her mother's recipe book missing and desperately looks for it because she's afraid someone might find out who she is. She wants to seek help from her mother's best friend and runs to dig in the dirt to see if the letter she buried was read. But it remains untouched, much to her dismay. One day, Lady Han used up the aged vinegar and tried to get some more. Meanwhile, Jiang Jiem arrives at the kitchen, finds the same vinegar that her mother buried and asks the child maids who were using this bowl. The child maids replied it was Lady Han. Jiang Jiem runs out to find Lady Han. Lady Han finds the letter Jiang Jiem wrote and runs to find Jiang Jiem. They meet in the courtyard and give each other a big hug. They finally realize who each other is. <laughs> Lady Han tells Jiang Jiem how her mother was framed and given poison. But Lady Han doesn't know what exactly happened 20 years ago. Jiang Jiem tells Lady Han her mother left a letter for her. Her mother told her to open the letter only when she became the head kitchen lady. This letter must have recorded what happened to her mother at that time. Jiang Jiem wants to get the letter but finds it's gone. It turns out that earlier, Young Ro followed Jiang Jiem and found the letter and handed it to Jiem Young. Jiem Young and Lady Choi read the letter, which tells how Jiang Jiem's mother was framed by Lady Choi and her aunt 20 years ago. Lady Choi asks Jiem Young to destroy the letter. Fear of being exposed for the crime she has committed, Lady Choi now tries to find a way to get rid of Lady Han and Jiang Jiem. The emperor is unable to recover from his cold. He takes the advice of the imperial doctor and goes to a hot spring sanctuary recommended by Lady Han. This place is her and Lady Park's hometown. She goes to a duck vendor she knows, buys duck and makes a duck soup for the emperor, which he is very impressed with. However, the next day when the emperor returns to the palace, he suddenly faints. When Lady Choi hears about this, she feels that this is her chance to turn the tables. She writes a letter to her brother Choi Pansel to find a way to put the blame on Lady Han. The right member of the state council named Oh Jiam Ho is a member of the royal cabinet. He has always worked closely with the Choi family to gain benefits from the palace. Choi Pansel asks Oh Jiam Ho to frame Lady Han as the culprit of the emperor's fainting incident. Oh Jiam Ho and Choi Pansel bribe a royal doctor named Zhang Yun Su to announce that the emperor's fainting is due to eating Lady Han's duck soup. Early the next morning, Lady Han is called in for interrogation. Oh Jiam Ho says that there was something wrong with the duck soup consumed by the emperor. She and Zhang Jiam are put in prison and tortured. The crowd then gathers in the imperial kitchen. The officials want to find out if the emperor's fainting has anything to do with the duck soup or not. So they ask Zhang Jiem and Lady Han to make another duck soup with the same ingredients in front of everyone. After it's done, they then pick a random person to try it to prove whether the duck soup is poisonous. Mary, a maid in the imperial kitchen, is chosen and after eating the duck soup, she passes out and has a high fever. Lady Choi is pleased to hear that. It turns out that it is all a conspiracy planned by her niece Jiem Young. Jiem Young asked Young Ro to make Mary eat some poisoned food in advance before she fainted. Jiang Jiem and Lady Han know nothing about it, and they are charged with treason. Lady Han already knows that it is hard to clear her name. She takes sole responsibility for the crime and begs the officials to spare Jiang Jiem. Later, Lady Choi comes to visit Lady Han in prison. Lady Han knows long ago that Lady Choi was the one who planned it, but Lady Han is willing to die herself and only hopes that Lady Choi will let Jiang Jiem go. After the doctor's treatment, the emperor awakens. He decides to exile Lady Han and Jiang Jiem to Jeju Island in consideration of their past performance. Lady Han was already tortured in prison, and now she is exiled to such a remote island, so her body can't take it anymore. 
Jang Jiem carries Lady Han on her back all the way. She's afraid that Lady Han can't make it, so she keeps talking to her. But Lady Han still can't hold on and dies. <laughs> Jang Jiem has become lonely again. Will she enter the palace again in the future? <laughs> on the other hand, Min Jong Ho finally learns from Duck Gu's wife that the benefactor who saved him that day was Jang Jiem. He rushes to Jeju Island against all odds, hoping to assist Jang Jiem in escaping. On their way to escape, he accidentally gets injured and Jang Jiem helps him dress his wounds. He brings up the incident that Jang Jiem saved him that day. When he sees Jang Jiem's haggard face, Min Jong Ho is distressed. He tells her he has contacted a merchant ship to send Jang Jiem away. But if Jang Jiem leaves, she will be left with a dead end. Even if she survives, she will have to live a life of being chased by soldiers and living in darkness for the rest of her life. He hopes that Jang Jiem can stay on Jeju Island instead of running away. He will find out the truth and clear her and Lady Han's names. Jang Jiem doesn't know whether she should stay or run away. She looks at the endless sea and is in a struggle. In a trance, she seems to see Lady Han. <laughs> Jang Jiem chooses to trust Min Jong Ho and she will stay on Jeju Island for the time being. Min Jong Ho leaves his post in the palace to be with Jang Jiem and has got an official position in Jeju. On Jeju Island, Jang Jiem meets a woman named Jang Diak. Jang Diak is a famous medicine maid with excellent medical skills and a forthright, straightforward nature. Jang Diak likes Jang Jiem because she finds that Jang Jiem can distinguish various herbs. So she asks Jang Jiem if she is interested in being a medicine maid. But Jang Jiem answers she is not interested. One day, Jang Jiem follows Jang to heal a civilian, but Jang leaves after she finds out they can't afford the medical bill. Jang Jiem is angry and says the duty of a medicine maid is to save people. How can a person's life be measured in terms of money? Jang Diak tells her that the herbs cost money, unless you get them for me. Hearing this, Jang Jiem goes out without saying a word. In fact, Jang Diak was trying to inspire Jang Jiem to get involved. Jang Jiem borrows money from Min Jong Ho and runs fast to the street, then follows the medicine list to buy the medicine. Jang Jiem tries to boil the medicine, but finds that the water that the civilians drink is seawater, and seawater can't be used to boil the medicine. Jang Jiem then goes outside with a bucket and asks where there is pure water. But the official tells her that pure water here is only for the officers and soldiers to drink. A man tells her that a pure spring is halfway up the mountain. So Jang Jiem goes over one mountain after another. Finally she finds it and fetches some water back. Later, Jang Jiem learns that the reason Jang Diak always asks the ordinary people for medical fee is to save money to dig ponds for the Jiju Islanders so they can drink pure water. Jang Diak says that Jiju Islanders take seawater for a long time and develop many diseases. So she wants to pay to dig ponds for the people so they can drink pure water. Jang Jiem finds that Jang Diak is actually very kind and faced with reality. She has her own way of doing things. Jang Diak says, No matter how much money I have, I can't help to cover all the costs for all the sick people. For poor people, the best doctor is not to get sick. This is the main reason why I ask for money from my patients. I want to save money to dig ponds so they can drink pure water. Jang Jiem thinks she is a good medicine lady. It turns out that Jang Diak was once a medicine maid in the palace, but she volunteered to come to this island and became the most famous medicine maid on the island. In the palace, Yunxing is hiding in the backyard crying because she misses Jang Jiem. A dog suddenly comes out. Yunxing is despondent, so she plays with the dog. Suddenly someone passes by and it turns out to be the emperor. Yunxing hurriedly wipes her tears and bows. The emperor asks her why you are crying. Lin Xing is so frightened that she doesn't dare to respond. The weeping Yunxing wins the emperor's favor so Yunxing then becomes a concubine. But all she wants is to find a chance to overturn the case for Lady Han and Jiang Jiem. One day, Jiang Jiem finds out that an official tries to ask Jiang Diak to be a medicine woman within the palace. But Jiang Jiem refuses. Jiang Jiem learns that the palace would select outstanding medicine ladies to be trained at the palace, after which the best medicine woman would stay at the palace. Jang Diak had also gone to the palace to be trained. At that time, she had outstanding medical skills and was asked to stay in the palace. But she didn't want to stay in the palace and volunteered to come to Jeju Island. Jang Jiem finally realizes that the only way to return to the palace is to become a medicine lady. <laughs>
she officially worships Jangdiak as her teacher and embarks on the path of learning medicine. Jangdiak is very strict with Jiam. She must recite the contents of the medical book word for word, otherwise she will be beaten with a wooden stick. Jangdiak says that cooking mistakes may just taste bad. Medical mistakes can kill people. Jiam thus feels the rigor of medicine and the preciousness of life. Then, Jiang improves the efficiency and correctness of Jiang Jum's diagnosis by having Jiang Jum check the pulse of the patient. As part of her medical training, Jiang Jiam has to learn how to tell if someone is healthy by looking at their face. She tells Sir Min that he has a fever because his face is red. He takes her hands and says, Yes, I do have a fever. Jiang Jiam runs away shyly. Two years later, Jiang Jum's medical skill has improved a lot. Jiang Diak begins to teach Jiang Jum acupuncture and lets Jiang Jim practice by applying acupuncture to herself. Jiang Jim makes a mistake that almost kills Jiang Diak. Unable to forgive herself for her mistake, Jiang Jim chooses to study the medical books in the cave. Although she has well remembered the acupoints and treatment of the disease, Jiang Jim is still afraid to try to apply acupuncture again. Then her adoptive father Duck Gu arrives to visit Jiang Jim, but he's suffering from severe seasickness after the journey to the island. However, Jiang Jiam is still too scared to do any acupuncture, so she carries out a moxa treatment on him instead. Happily his health improves. During this time, Japanese warlords and pirates frequently raided the islands of Korea. Jeju often experiences attacks from the Japanese. There is an epidemic on a nearby island. Therefore, Master Min is asked by the island's governor to investigate it and take the army with him and Jiang Diak. While they are away, Japanese warriors take over Jeju Island and governing officials flee, leaving soldiers and government servants behind. The leader of the Japanese army falls ill after landing, and his life is in danger. The vice general of the Japanese army escorts all the islanders outside and asks the doctor to come out. A Josian officer replies that they originally had a distinguished doctor named Jiang Diak here, but she left Jeju Island recently. And then a civilian speaks up, saying there is a medicine lady named Jiang Jiam here. Jiang Jiam is then escorted to the barrack. After diagnosis, she finds that the leader's condition is in crisis. If not treated within seven days, he would surely die. The Japanese general then asks her to treat him immediately. But Jiang Jiam says she could only check the pulse, not apply acupuncture. The Japanese general threatens her that he will kill Duck Gu if she doesn't save the leader. Jiang Jiam has to take the risk to try it. She tries to calm her spirit and concentrates on the acupuncture points. Finally, she inserts the needle in. Twenty minutes later, she is already sweating profusely. Next, the Japanese leader only needs to take some tonics to recover. Walking out of the room, Jiang Jum is in tears. She has finally taken this step. Three hours later, the Japanese leader gradually wakes up. The woman in charge of buying the medicine comes back with the medicine. Jiang Jiam opens it, and there is a letter inside. It turned out that Min Zhong Ho's army has rushed back and they want Jiang Jum to lure the Japanese to their ambush. The next day, Jiang Jum tells the Japanese vice general that the leader needs one more herb for his recovery, and that herb is in the back of the mountain. Soon, Jiang Jum lures the enemy to the back of the mountain. Just as the Japanese army prepares to dig for the herb, Min Zhong Ho's army, ambushed in the back, suddenly comes out and fights with them. Soon the enemy army is all wiped out. Not only does Jiang Jiam take the first step to apply acupuncture, she also becomes the hero of the island. The annual selection of medical women is officially held. The examiners are all royal doctors in the palace. One of the examiners is Woonbek, the manager of the herb garden. Woonbek asks Jiang Jiam if she's learning medicine to return to the palace for revenge and she says yes. Jiang Jiam tells him she wants to return to the palace to take revenge against those who killed her mother and Lady Han. Woonbek gets angry saying that medicine is for healing people and not a means of revenge. During the exam, Woonbek gives Jiang Jiam a very difficult question. He asks her if she has an enemy with an incurable disease and asks her to save him. Would she choose to save her enemy or not to save him? Jiang Jiam thinks about it for a long time and replies that she has not yet decided whether to save or not to save. The exam is soon over and Duck Gu is happily waiting for Jiang Jiam to come out of the exam room. Jiang Jiam tells Duku that there is a doctor she knows among the examiners and this person knows that she is learning medicine for revenge. So she's sure she won't pass the exam. At night Jiang Jiam is very sad. Is it wrong to avenge her mother? The next morning the results are out and people gather around while Jiang Jiam no longer dares to look. Duku looks at it and finally, in the last column, he sees Jiang Jiam's name. 
Jang Jiem is shocked. It turns out that Wu Bek decides to give her a chance to change her mind, hoping that she could let go of her hatred on her way to study medicine. Jang Jiem finally gets an opportunity to enter the palace, and at the same time she learns that Min Zhong Ho came to Jeju Island for her and convinces him to go back to the capital to work. Before entering the palace, the teacher master named Dr. Shin announces to the newly picked medicine maids that they will undergo strict training for the next six months. If they do not pass, they can't enter the palace. Jang Jiem needs to diagnose several patients. But Jang Jiem is too hasty and overconfident, and she makes the wrong diagnosis. Dr. Shin has doubts about her suitability to work in medicine because he thinks she is too arrogant to be a doctor. Jang Jiem soon learns her mistake is that she never pays attention to the patient's records or their usual regimen, and only uses her medical knowledge to treat them. Now she has learned the importance of medical rigor and proper attitude. She apologizes to Dr. Shin for her past arrogance, who remains serious in warning Jang Jiem that one does not change so easily, especially the wiser one. The six-month training period is over and exam results announced. Jang Jiem passes and moves to the royal hospital. Everyone in Josian times needed an ID and she gets her pass to enter into the palace. When the news comes that the queen suddenly shows signs of miscarriage, everyone freaks out. Heads of departments and the head eunuch get together to talk about what to do. Wunbek asks Jang Jiem to go with him. Jiem Young, who has become the head of the royal kitchen, comes to the meeting and is shocked to see Jang Jiem standing in the corner wearing a medicine lady uniform. What will Jang Jiem encounter in the palace later? I will see you in my next video, which will be uploaded within three days. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.